This is Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz in Sacramento, and we're joined by our good friend. He is Craig Watson. He is the director of the California Arts Council, which is what? Well, it's the state agency that has, for more than 40 years, supported the arts in California. And so it makes use of taxpayer funding mm -hmm. to support uh, nonprofit arts groups all over the state and really celebrate the creativity of California. You talk about funding, and when we spoke maybe two, three years ago, uh, your answer about funding was quite somber. Mm -hmm. <laughs> funding was either down or non-existent, I don't quite recall, but the sure. news is better. Well, it, it was flat for many years. Yeah, flat, okay. And, uh, and, and from a ranking standpoint, to right. the extent that that's interesting, for the, our viewers is we were dead last on a per capita basis as a state agency. And this is California. California. It's the arts capital so of America. So when you say somber, yes, it was a little somber, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but the facts are that we've made great progress. And so now our budget is around 12 million. So oh, we were from, at five yeah. and now we're at 12. That's huge. So on a percentage basis, we like to say this is huge right. you know, for our agency. It still represents a, a a rather modest investment. Does it? Absolutely. Where do we rank now? Do you know? I think we're either 45th or 46th. Oh, Even with that much of a bump? Even with that much of a bump. That's, I mean, it's testimony to the size of California. Right, fair right? enough. But it, that increase has allowed us now to mm. reach much deeper into uh, every community, really every county virtually in California. Yeah, I must say, we have a bureau in Reading, and we interviewed, I guess, it's your partner, is that what it's called? It's the Chico Reading Arts Council. I think that's the title of it. It's a combined arts council. Oh, no, you Shasta, that's what it's called. There you go. You're right. And uh, they are what we call our state local partner. Right. And so in 55 of the 58 counties, we have a Board of Supervisor designated sure. partner. So it's usually an arts council, an arts commission. Right. And so that's one way we distribute our funding. But you're going to have more partners soon, it looks like. Mm. There is a program launching, this just sounds astronomical, statewide cultural districts. It's a very exciting initiative and one that um, legislation was signed this past October. Right. And this was a bill. Uh, co-authored between a Democrat and a Republican. Nice. Who? So it was Richard Bloom sure, from Santa, Santa Monica, Monica uh -huh. and Marie Waldron out sure. of Escondido. Sure. And Ben Allen, I think, came in Senator. as a co-author, uh -huh. Senator. Uh -huh. Anyway, that bill got broad bipartisan support. Uh, it passed, flew right through committees. Fantastic. But the idea is to create a statewide program right. that's competitive, where mm. a local community um, can apply for and then be designated, if they're chosen in this competitive process, be chosen as a state cultural district. Ah, so it will. there will be zones, for example. So when we say statewide, it means throughout the state one can apply to be a cultural district, a cultural zone. That's right, and the definition often is described as a walkable, yeah, geographical, geographic definable area okay. of a city. So think of, um, in big cities, there are certainly neighborhoods. In fact, there are arts and culture districts already designated by local cities in many places, uh -huh. whether it's Long Beach or San Francisco or San Diego. But what this will do is, for the first time, create a state designation. And we know from our experience looking at other states right. that this is a very attractive and important form of branding and promotion which these local districts, if they're chosen competitively amongst all of their uh, co uh, competitors, right. they'll be able to market that in a way that says, we are worthy not only of the state designation, but come check us out. And so we think from a tourism standpoint, from a also just from a cultural development standpoint in the local community to value that area in a special way. What is culture, though? Well, <laughs> uh, it'll be interesting to find? see how all, the, how all the criteria gets finally developed. It's in development now. By whom? Uh, we have a consultant working with us, or we'll have a consultant shortly mm -hmm. working with us to do a lot of research. There are 13 other states mm -hmm. that have similar programs. They'll do a lot of interviewing around the state to get the temperature of how this could develop. Mm -hmm. But it certainly could involve uh, historic mm -hmm. neighborhoods, so history is important. Uh, cultural institutions are important, potentially the aggregation of artist studios or galleries. I don't think there is a one, there's not one size fits all. I, I would be surprised 
if the um, food and culinary, right. even viticulture, wasn't an overlay or in some ways a, a, a benefit to any cultural district, certainly. So what will it mean to be a culture district, a cultural district? Sure. Will there be signage? Will there be funding? Will there be public-private partnerships? Can the district tax itself like a bid? I mean, so many questions. No, no, and all great questions. Mm -hmm. And the variety that exists in these other states mm -hmm. is quite broad. And so in some of the state examples, uh, there is taxing authority. In some, there's special incentives. Some, mm -hmm. there's tax abatement based mm -hmm. on art sales. Mm -hmm. uh, but all of them share in common, certainly a branding and signage program. That'll be one component for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, we expect, as the California Arts Council, to provide, to provide technical assistance, and that mm -hmm. might take the form of small uh, startup grants to provide consulting services or technical assistance to help them with governance and structure and a plan for growth over mm -hmm. time and how they govern themselves. But eventually, I, I could imagine that the state would see the benefit of these programs and work to invest more in them. That's what happened in Massachusetts. It started five years ago in Massachusetts with little or no state investment. And then this last year, the state legislature voted uniquely a $5 million okay. sum of money to be worked into the benefit of these new arts and culture districts. Now, sir, as we speak today, over 50 areas have already expressed interest to be designated cultural districts. Mm -hmm. Do you have a sense as to how many you plan on designating? Does the legislation say? It's, it's quite broad at this okay. point. So there's no expectation that there's a set number. Right. I think it will be driven by the quality of the applications their adherence to a set of criteria. Again, this is a competitive program. Sure. So whether it's 15 or 30. Do you have some... a sense? Can you tell us? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you may not have it yet. No, no, yeah. I, I could, yeah. uh, in my mind, it's 20, you know. But right. again, I'm just, I, I'm yeah. not going to be running uh, this program personally. It will be run by our agency. I see. But the choices will be, as we do with our grant programs, it will be peer panel oh, review, okay. right? It's not staff who choose who gets sure, sure. funding from the state. But will far... you be on the panel? <laughs> is no, that, is that I will not, not appropriate? I will not yeah, be on okay. the panel. And uh, the panelists will be made up of some cross-section of top-notch folks who maybe come from economic development, maybe sure. come from the arts, maybe come from city planning. We don't know yet, right? So the program's in development. But the fact that we have 50 cities who, yeah. in a very short period of time, after the governor signed the legislation, they said, hey, we want to know about right. this program. So the interest is high. So let's just say, for argument's sake, 20 in the first batch. Does the legislation then say you can add another 10 in year two? Or again, this is a clay and you can mold it. It's, it's an <laughs> annual program. OK. The legislation does speak to a three-year designation ah, so with, you, a, with a renewal process after that period of time. So and you need so to stay on it. You need right. to stay on it and show that you are staying involved in the criteria or right. meeting the criteria of this designation. So it's not something that's permanent but it's something that's dynamic and, and growing over time. So for our viewers that may be watching who maybe live in an area that would like to become a cultural district, maybe they're a city council member or on the planning commission, sure. what should they do? Well, first and foremost, they should let us know their interest. Okay. We have an information template that you can fill out ah, on our website. Which is? Oh, we'll put it on the screen. <laughs> oh, I know, no, arts.ca.gov. That's Done. right. So you'll find, uh, you can look for the cultural districts piece mm -hmm. and look for that uh, designation and let us know of your interest. Uh -huh. And that way you'll be the first to be informed when the RFP, or right. excuse me, when the application process right. goes out. Um, so that's the way to stay connected. This is incredibly exciting. It really is. And I do believe in the depth of my core that having that designation will matter mm -hmm. in a lot of different ways, especially in a state like California. So all I can say is congratulations. Well, thank yeah. you. We're I, looking I think forward it's just to fantastic. It. His yeah. name is Craig Watson. He is the director of the California Arts Council. If you want information on the upcoming application for statewide cultural district designation, the website is arts.ca.gov. My name is Brad Pomerantz in Sacramento, local edition. Thank you.